Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd have a little bit of a discussion on uh, the importance of play, in particular experimentation with colour. Now this is going to be a continuation of a discussion that we've been having over the course of, you know, this last couple of years. Um, I've talked about these concepts before, but we're going to continue that discussion and, and uh, explore a little further, because I think it's a really important topic and one that can really open up, um, you know, new ways of, of working in your hobby and, and with your painting and so on, uh, to get more out of it and, and, and make a, a basically a more fun experience experience for you. So, um, well, hopefully anyway. So I thought we'd, we'd, uh, we'd discuss that today. And while we're doing that, we're going to be painting uh, Aurak the Drowner here uh, for Night Haunt and uh, doing a little bit of that color work that we've been doing on, on many of the videos lately, um, an underpainting style uh, with a lot of color and then coming back in over the top. And this will have my usual uh, blue-green blend on the on the robes and so on, like my other uh, Night Haunt videos and also um, uh, some of my other soul bite stuff as well. Uh, yeah, just getting into that. But for things like the boat and, and other areas, we're going to be pushing a few different uh, undertones here, a few different colors. So I've got a range here to go through, some magentas, yellow, purple, blue, green, etc. And we're going to build that up. We're going to use the airbrush to begin with uh, to create some spots of light and, and various color tones and shifts, and then come back in with the brush and build up some areas. But because this has a lot of in interior elements and so on that are going to be hard to paint uh, while it's all put together. I'm one of those crazy people that like to build it all first and not do a uh, sub-assembly. So we're going to try to create a more moody effect here where we're um, hitting certain areas and uh, just lightening up more the exterior elements and leaving the interiors quite dark and, and you know, sort of uh, subdued. So hopefully that should work. I mean, this is a spirit. This is a, you know, um, a ghost. So that kind of idea or application should work really well. But it'll give us a chance to really explore some colors uh, and, and just play around with it and, and develop our knowledge. You know, that's part of the process of this. And I think that'll that'll pair really well with what we're about to talk about. So uh, I guess uh, I should stop waffling on and um, let's get started, eh? So yeah, playing with color. So, you know, I've talked about these ideas before and the importance of it, uh, more to do with things like your in-between model, you know, you refresh a model to uh, refresh, refresh your palette and, um, you know, explore, experiment and so on. But yeah, the importance of play is a, is a very, uh, I guess, you know, prominent idea for artists, creative people generally. There's a lot of uh, talks and, and so on by, you know, very smart people that talk about this. Uh, John Cleese is one of those. If you ever look up uh, any John Cleese stuff uh, of, of talks that he does, there's plenty of free, um, you know, uh, videos on that on YouTube. And he's got a particular speech that he does on the importance of play. And he talks about his experiences with Monty Python and uh, how they would generate their ideas and and so on, and he and he and he discusses this this concept quite uh, in quite uh, depth, and so I won't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, you know, try to uh, ruin his explanation by trying to repeat it to you. But the essential thing is that you know um, moments of play where you know you're able to explore ideas in a very free and open way. <clears throat> Is, is a really important aspect of, of creativity. And so even though, you know, as a hobbyist, you, you may or may not think of yourself as creative or you may or may not, um, you know, consider those aspects, you just think, you know, yes, I, I enjoy playing with these toys, you know, um, but you are in fact actually in a creative process and, and an artist of sorts. I've, I've said this many times, uh, even if you don't necessarily see yourself that way you are, no matter what kind of skill level you attribute to yourself or any of those things, uh, um, you know, you are still engaged in, in, a, in this kind of creative pursuit. And so uh, with that in mind, these concepts of play uh, will work for you, right? So you don't need to, you don't need to assign any importance to being an artist or anything like that for, for any of these ideas to work. It's more about setting up a time and space to allow yourself basically to tap into that earlier stage of, of who you were when you were a child, right? When, when nothing matters and you, you're, the playtime is the, is the work time, you know, the playtime is the best time. And so you, that's, that's the kind of thing you're trying to create a, a little world for yourself where, where that's possible. I mean, in the end, that's what all this hobby is about. It's about setting up a, um, you know, a confined little, little safe bubble in, in this chaotic world where you get to enjoy 
enjoy something for the sake of it without any other problems or issues happening and you can lose yourself in that process right we, we get addicted to that that's part of this hobby whether it's in the gaming side you know the theory crafting for for lists and so on or competitive play or it's in the narrative you know creating stories and campaigns and so on and and you know names and stories for your characters and all that sort of thing or it's in the conversion and you know all of those sorts of aspects of designing your own uh, miniatures that have their own flavor or then now in terms of what we're talking about today color and you know applying your own color schemes and your own unique uh touch to these to these models uh, or even sculpting them yourself and then 3d printing them and so on like like i do for my brand or you know anyone does that that has access to 3d um software and so on and, and they, they sculpt them up or traditionally so you've got all these these elements and that's we're all just trying to you know catch that wave i've often talked about the analogy of the surfer and catching the perfect wave when it comes to um you know that extended time of of uh, deep work and and the playtime is kind of attached to this idea so you know you you need a an element of um just free exploration in order to uh get to the point where you can you know fall into that deep work that 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 real good productivity time uh, you, you need some time to just just relax and and do things for its own sake and so what does that mean for, for the hobby and, and, you know, colors and so on? Well, you know, the, the simplest, the simplest answer to that is to break out of your usual uh, set of colors you like and, and pick a couple extras. You don't have to completely break the mold, just choose some fun colors and then work with them. And, you know, doing these kinds of underpainting, overpainting ideas are, are good because, you know, you're not really going to ruin the model. You know, you, you've seen now plenty of my videos where, you know, you put one set of colors down, especially with the plague bearers that I've done. Uh, you'll see that it's a very, very, you know, it l looks almost, almost like a, a very bad paint job, right? Like the initial colors and the, the very uh, crude way that they're applied in the early stages and then how it all comes together by the end and, and you don't see any of that, any of that sort of roughness anymore because the, the colors have slowly come together and merged and, and to get to that point, you need that, that element of play there to be brave enough to allow yourself to do something that might seem uh, less great than what you normally could do or something like that, right? You're, you're creating a situation where you're allowing yourself just to be uh, fun and then just have a go, you know, and almost, it's almost, I mean, that particular type of underpainting idea, you know, in, in movie um, talk and that sort of thing is called a clown pass, right? And then that's exactly what it looks like, a, a clown makeup. You know, you've got all these colors everywhere that don't really connect to each other and all very strange. But what it's giving you is this broad spectrum, like rainbow color, which is going to influence everything that goes on top. And so it's a really fun way to get into color theory and into the idea of, of playing with color because, you know, you're free to do anything you like. You can see how easy it is to change it. You can just put another layer on top and, and there you go. And the, the thicker you go, the more opaque you go with the color, the more you'll remove it. But if you allow it to be thin and you put more water with it, suddenly you're seeing those two colors mix and you're getting a, a, new, a new variety of colors that come through. Or you might leave it entirely and use color as shadow. So that's another, another, you know, developmental step along this sort of color journey. You start to realize you can have different shadows to your highlights, depending on how you want to go. So a good example of that, you know, you would have seen on Instagram and other social media networks, you know, uh, painters like Craftworld Studio, they do a lot of uh, color as shadow, right? So when you look at their work, it's very colorful. And that's because if you look closely, all of the shadowed areas are a, a color, a very specific color, and, you know, quite a bold color often. And they're, and they're, they're never really using black as the shadow, right? There's no black there. It's, it's, a, it's a classic thing in art. Illustrators, painters, you know, they they don't use pure blacks generally as the as the shadow it's always a color uh, or some version of black that isn't uh, full black but it's often a, a color a very dark brown of a very dark blue or purple etc and so if you look at their work and other display painters that are in a similar vein to them they're just one of the more popular ones online that you'll see but using color as a way to to, to give you those dark tones uh, it is great, you know, so it's breaking out of the idea of, um, I mean, as I've shown here, where you just do a simple gradient of dark to light of a, of a particular color palette, right? But you can go further than that 
and have your dark tones in that gradient a totally different color and then as you move up into your mid tones you now move to another color you know so you're getting you're getting a change but it's going to work because the values are correct so this is all getting into those more sort of uh, we're starting to build into sort of more higher levels of knowledge when it comes to art theory but at a simple level we're talking about the the playful aspects of this where you just get to explore and I think that's the best place to begin with all of this and that, that's what I try to I guess show here on the channel is is some er, some early ways you can get into color without it being too overwhelming and, and complex because like everything like everything that you learn you know uh, if you try to bombard yourself with too much it becomes you, it can almost depress you right you can get very very down ab about it you know all of that stuff that you see online can can just overwhelm you and 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 debilitate you to the point where you don't do anything and so setting aside time to be playful and doing it for for just creative sake is a really important thing for you it arms you your your mental state you know your your enjoyment of this hobby it's all very important stuff and that and so i would urge you you know next time you sit down and you want to paint something new or, or just another model you know maybe go okay we'll, we'll try this one a little different we'll use a few different colors and we won't give ourselves a, t a time limit we'll just you know muck around for a little while maybe you know you'll give yourself an hour or something like that but you know you just want to have a, a, a nice little piece of time where it's just you and the model and some colors and just and just see what comes out you know and don't allow yourself to get too caught up in, in it needing to be pretty or it needing to be you know something of a certain standard just see how the paint reacts and it's literally playing with it as a sculptural material so you're just mucking around with these colors and as you're seeing me paint uh you know the drowner here by now at this stage we should be into some of the more details and you will have seen some of the build up of of those colors uh influencing the overpainting and and me trying to wrestle those together so you know putting different colors into the shadows doing a little bit of that idea but coming up with i guess a, a way of working that might might suit an army painting pr uh, approach because when you look at these display painters online they're coming at it from they're only painting one model so they can put a lot more time a lot more effort into that singular piece right so that's why you know they get a much higher standard if you were to apply that to an army you're probably not going to use those exact processes but you can use the idea the theory behind how they approach it but you'd have to you know rework some of it so that it it has at least a better time efficiency behind it right so uh, that's part of this you know when i show these sort of uh, color ideas it's in the in the idea that you might be using it for an army so that it's not going to take a thousand years to to do each individual model so that's part of the process using the airbrush using some uh, simple brushwork techniques simple layering and so on you can apply that over many models and that's part of that that playful you know uh, experimentation finding little ways and recipes and and you know you know two or three or four step processes that can be done uh, and mass produced over, over a few models so you can actually get that warband done or that army done or whatever you want to do because often that's what we're doing where most of us in the hobby um, you know are generally painting for something it's usually connected to a game that the model is part of some way you're probably going to use the models it's rare that you like I, oh well, i don't know maybe maybe it's less rare these days the number of people that just paint for display or just 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 for painting sake uh, I, I would i would say that most people even even those painters that like to do that will at least have some part of their collection that is dedicated to uh, some kind of skirmish or tabletop war game of some sort. You know, they're, they're all pretty much made for that purpose. So we're, we're all going to eventually touch on it, right? Even if you prefer just display painting or just doing it for that sake, you probably will engage in it, or at least your friends around you will, and that'll influence you. So, you know, having some of those more efficient processes down is a good thing. So yeah, what are some of the benefits, you know, associated with that playful time? Well, it's going to de-stress you, right? And you're going to, you're going to be more, um, I guess, just in, in a more fluid state, which might open up some new ideas. And, you know, you might, you know, get presented with some failures, but through that you might learn something new or find a new color or a, a new brand that, that's interesting or just something that, that you didn't expect uh, to happen. And so then there you go, you've got that new piece of, of, of idea that might now contribute 
to that process you do when you're painting your army or you're painting you know you know many models you just add a new little piece to your workflow and now now it's now it's evolving right and you're you're progressing and so next time you look at your models you'll notice that there'll be a jump in in skill levels that's the other aspect of this by allowing yourself to do these kinds of experiments you're going to be adding to your skill set and building um, you know, a higher level. So you will notice uh, better jumps in, in, in that progression, you know, because it's the same concept as being in the gym. And if you're lifting weights, for instance, um, you know, you're, you're, you're getting that uh, more dynamic kind of experience for your muscles. So they'll, they'll start to repair and grow and, and, and build faster. When you when you do a lot of repetitive, repetitive tasks in the gym that are all exactly the same, what happens is your body uh, learns how to do that and becomes more efficient at doing that, but the progression slows down, right? You hit that wall and that, that always happens. So you have to then change up the routine to, to, to get your muscles and your body to start going, oh, we need to do this now. So now it, it starts to grow again and you start to get uh, you know, more, more gains out of, out of the, the training that you're doing. And that's kind of the approach of this play and experimentation is to shake up your process a little bit in a, in a very relaxed, calm and peaceful way and a happy way to then uh, you know, progress your skills rather than just being so dog, oh, I've got to you know, do things better. I've got to you know, do you know, 10 layers of, of you know, shading and highlighting because I saw it in a video or whatever, right? You know, you don't have to, you want to break out of that and, and, and think, okay, well, you know, this is the way I paint. So let's try to, you know, match some of these ideas to what I do, not necessarily follow everything and find some new and fun ways to explore these colors so that I get a, a better finish. And it might mean that you don't have to do 10 layers of something. It might be only one or two, you know, there's many examples of that. Even on YouTube, there are painters that do a lot of uh, glazing techniques, a lot of uh, airbrush and sort of contrast paint techniques that are able to produce high result, high level results, uh, you know, without needing to do that much more traditional style like you might see me do with, with, with the gradients and, and the many layers, there might be ways to get around that. You might say, well, that's cool, Adrian, but you know, I, I need to get this done a little faster or I, I, I get bored too quickly. I want to want to mix it up more. So I'll, you know, throw in some contrast steps along that way to, to speed up the process, right? And that's totally uh, okay. And that's, that's exactly what you should do. Because that's part of, you know, your journey as a, as a hobbyist, your journey as a painter, etc. Is, is to figure out those those things that work for you, utilize the parts of it that that, that that work and throw away the rest. You know, you shouldn't always be listening to everything and everyone says, including me, right? You shouldn't be listening to all the, all the stuff that I blabber on about because, you know, that's coming from my experience and that's great. And, and there can be helpful things there and, and you know, inspirational, etc. cetera, uh, elements to what, to what I might show. But ultimately, you know, you create your world for, for your hobby and your little bubble world, your space, you know, where that you sit at, you know, when you go to your table and so on, that's got to be right for you. It's, it's, and it's got to have its own set of parameters and so on that work for you, right? So that you, that you can get the best out of it, which is the, which is the whole point. So yeah, there's just some thoughts that I've had on 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 you know uh, some of I guess the the benefits of of uh, playing with color and, and coming up with new ideas and new processes and ways to uh, affect your overall workflow uh, when you're painting models for the in, in the hobby and so on. And uh, by now you would have seen the drowner should be getting close to it to an end result I guess uh, somewhere there. And hopefully I've I've experimented with a few colors and come up with with a few new ideas. There were some some uh, ideas I wanted to try here. I wanted to get some more more uh, you know color of shadow into the into the timber that the, the boat is constructed of and into the bone elements. I was hoping to do that. I don't know if I've done that completely, but we'll see. Uh, and hopefully there's a sort of a moody color palette going on, you know, mostly in my traditional scheme that I've done, but maybe with a few elements that are slightly unique or, or, or improved on from, from my previous attempts. But we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it now and see how I've gone and, and see what my final thoughts are on this. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, the talk so far. So there we are, just some thoughts on, uh, you know, the importance of play and, and in this in particular case, color and, and you know, experimentation. And uh, let's take a look and see how I've gone with that with that whole experience. So yeah, uh, you know, he's come up well, I think. And, and the, the goals I set out for myself, which was to 
uh, play with some uh, colors in the shadows of the bone areas, uh, you know, and a few other things, you know, doing a bit of airbrushing on the ghosts and leaving them, you know, in a very soft uh, application to push them back in the background and have this be more the focus, you know, I think was relatively successful. You know, we play with some color in here. I, I was trying to come up with something that's a sort of a fast approach for army painting that might simulate some of those display painters' ideas uh, in this. And I think, you know, for the most part, I'm definitely on the right track. There's definitely some more work to go, but uh, yeah, you'll see more of that sort of thing coming into the next into this year and, and next year and so on. Um, you know, just playing around with some of these ideas to, to uh, bring them into army painting generally uh, to make things a bit more interesting. But yeah, I'm happy overall. I think he's I think he's come up pretty cool, and he'll be a nice addition uh, to the rest of my Nighthorn figures. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you know, and you, you can see how I've included the airbrushing and then uh, painted over the top and so on, and tried to include a few different, uh, I guess, uh, techniques or approaches to finishing this, and not worried too much about every single detail. There's a lot of areas here that are just, you know, faded away into, you know, dark color and not much uh, tonality at all. And that's, that's intentional to try to keep your eye uh, in this area here. So yeah, a, a lot of fun and definitely something to try for yourself, you know, just to remove all of the constraints of, uh, you know, painting a good model and just and just go at it and, and try to find something cool about the model that you want to try to work on and, and have a go at. And you should come up with something really cool. So yeah, I'll leave a nice image for him at the end with the paint list as I always do. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Please hit that like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.